wonderful ideas, information. Are your heads filled? I am not here to fill your heads with anything else. In fact, I'm not here to speak to your minds at all. We all have goals and dreams and things that we want our practice to become. Most people in our profession, many are, stri are struggling. There's something we want to achieve, but that great, wonderful practice, a practice on our terms, is something that seems to elude most people. It's just somewhere down the road, but we're not quite there yet, and we're trying to learn what it is and how do we get there and how do we really get to where we want to be. And what I want to share with you today is an absolutely simple, clear, and yet profound truth that when you fully get it, when you fully allow it in, it can transform the very quality of your life and your practice. And one of the most beautiful things about it is its simplicity. So while it is, of course, important to learn, to grow, so many beautiful ideas shared here today, valuable ideas, I've, I've taken notes. But yet the essence of success, the essence of living the life you really want to live, is incredibly simple. And we like to make it complex because that's what our minds do. Minds like to solve problems. Minds like to create problems and then solve them. So let's just explore this and understand why is it that while many firms are struggling, there are a few who are not. What's the essence? What's the secret? And it has to do with the very, very simple truth that this line, this vertical line represents. And what it represents is this one present moment. And we've all heard that everything we need is here, it's within us, happiness is within us, fulfillment is within us. That's true. The challenge we face is how do we access that? And if it is true, one of my definitions of success, I'm sorry, of truth, definition of truth is that it always is true, it always was true, it will always be true. There's nothing that we have to do to make it true. The only choice we have is to look away from it, which we do most of the time, and I'll share with you what that mechanism is about and why we look away. So we can look away from it, as we often do, or we can stop and acknowledge it. We can allow ourselves to be present in this one unending moment of now. And as we allow ourselves to be present in this moment, everything that we are, everything that we need, our wisdom, our clarity, our understanding, the resources of the world come into alignment with us as we simply allow ourselves to be present. When we're present, we can create the most amazing practice, a practice where we're attracting great clients, we have a phenomenal team, the culture is great, people love coming to work, it's flowing, it's working. And that doesn't mean for a moment that there are no challenges. Of course there are. It's, it's life. Life unfolds. Challenges present all the time. But we meet the challenges from an inner space of centeredness and calmness and equanimity. And we deal with it from that moment, as opposed to being reactionary, as opposed to dealing with it from a place of emotionality or based upon our past and our views and our conclusions. So when we're present, we have the ability to just manifest the most beautiful practice. And then, of course, that is, it spills over into our lives, where we can live a life where we're feeling whole and complete and fulfilled and have what we need in this moment. It is a beautiful experience. And I know that so many of you here today are experiencing that, at least from time to time and experiencing it more and more on a regular basis. So that's what's available to each and every one of us. In fact, I say that it's our birthright. It's what we're here to discover. Ultimately, I believe we exist to discover who we really are as human beings, and everything else leads us to that. Because everything else in our lives that we pursue, we pursue happiness and joy and peace in the world, Dr. Rao said it beautifully, the if-then model. But at some point, we stop and we realize that's not it. 
Some, there's something else, because I've ch achieved a lot, I've done a lot, I have a lot, and it's good, I love it, but there's still something missing. There's always something missing. And when we live our lives with the sense that something's missing, what's missing, and it took me a long time to figure this out, folks, but what's missing is the full connection with ourselves in this moment. So why are we not connected? If this one moment is all there is, and if who we really are is this whole complete being, then why do, we, why do we not experience it? And it has to do with the fact of where do we live? If our attention, if our awareness, our consciousness is not in this present moment, then where the heck is it? And you can see there's the past and there's the future. So it, we're, we're thinking about the past. Our minds exist at this level of past. We carry the past with us in the, in the form of stories and interpretations, and we project that into the future. We're thinking about the future. Isn't that what the if-then model is? If I get this, if I get that, then I'll be happy. We're thinking about the future. We're very busy about the future. And all the lessons and things that we've learned in the past, the things that didn't work well, the pains, the struggles, the failures, we want to carry that because we have to remember that stuff because if we don't, we could do it again. We don't want to do it again, so I carry that with me. I use that to determine who I need to be, how I need to be in the world, so I can create a great future. And I'm very, very busy, we are very busy, living on this horizontal line, which is in our heads, in the world we've created in our heads, all of which keeps us from being present here and now. We don't need to do that. Here's how we form the views that we store in our head that create this future in our minds. This is where we get stuck. And after I show you how and where we get stuck, I'll explain how to get unstuck. And again, it's so beautiful because it's so easy. It's so easy to get unstuck. So something happens in our lives. There's an event, okay? And the event might be a client saying to you, you know, your services are great, but your fees are just too high. Or maybe you propose um, an engagement and you don't get it because the competition had a lower fee. So you're struggling with fee issues, not uncommon in our profession. Or maybe you're struggling with issues about acquiring clients. Whatever it is, there's an event Let's say you're losing some clients because of fees, not winning engagements. So you interpret that to mean something, of course. And what does it mean? Well, your interpretation might be, understandably, clients want lower fees. Who could argue with that? You just lost a few engagements because of fees, so you decide that clients want lower fees, and so you form a view around that. Clients are cheap, they don't want to pay for value. I can't charge very much because if I do, I'll lose business or I won't get business. This is what happens to us. You cannot argue with the views that people form. They make sense. There's valid reason for it, valid basis for it. The problem is the views that we carry shape our future. You see, the world doesn't care what we believe. It just reflects it back as truth. Rick was talking about the reticular activating system. That's where it gets stored. So anything that's consistent with what we our view passes through and validates it. Anything that's inconsistent doesn't even get in. So everyone's right. So the person who feels that clients just won't pay higher fees, they'll lower their fees, but they'll still lose some engagements because of fees, and they'll just be struggling in their practice because all this stuff you hear about value pricing and stuff, I'll tell you, I think it's a lot of nonsense because I know clients, I've got a bunch of them, and they won't pay. And that's what the mind chatter is that goes on. We form those views. And the problem isn't that we form views. That's the nature of mind. We can't change it. The problem is we don't know their views. We see them as reality, and that's where we get stuck. So our past determines our future. Our past views, the views that we form, the conclusions we've reached, the decisions we made all form this default future that we live into unless we intervene, unless we intervene with the power of presence. And presence is nothing more and bringing your full awareness, your attention, to this one moment and allowing whatever's there to be there. Let me give you a couple of examples. Names have been changed, by the way, to protect all the guilty parties in the stories. So Jerry was struggling with getting new clients. He 
would do a little bit of marketing and he would talk to referral sources and people were telling him, hey, it's pretty tough out there, it's hard to get clients. He talked to some of his colleagues and they would confirm that, yeah, we're, we're struggling too, clients, we don't have the loyalty we used to have. And then, in case that wasn't bad enough to feed his view that it's hard to get clients, you read some of the industry surveys and here, sure, sure enough, that's the number one issue we're facing, it's hard to get clients. So you can't argue with Jerry's view that it's hard to get clients, he prove it to you. And then, presence. Stop. It's hard to get clients? Yes, that's one view. But if it was an absolute truth, that would mean every single firm would find it hard to get clients, and yet you read the statistics and you see, well, there are some firms doing exceedingly well. Do they live in a different universe? Not really. So when we're present, we say, well, okay, that's one view, hard to get clients. What else is possible? Presence reveals opportunities, possibilities. Presence reveals possibilities. And in the world of possibilities, another view is, well, maybe we need to just be better at communicating our value. Maybe we need to be better at delivering value. Maybe we need to be talking to our clients differently so they perceive the value, and maybe there'll be lots of opportunities for us if we do that. And there are many firms in this room that I know are doing that and know the truth of it. So if some firms can do it, anyone can do it. Peter had an issue about fees. He, he had, was always afraid to charge fees because he felt clients were fee sensitive, and he was approached by a client who needed some help negotiating the sale of their property to the government. It was a forced sale, but they had some negotiating room. This was up in Canada. And so Peter approached it, and he, we had a bit of a conversation. It wasn't just with me. It was with some of the folks who were here. And he said he was going to charge the client $10,000. What did we think? And he saw, we asked him why he thought that, and we could feel those self-limiting views coming out. And we said to Peter, we understand that view, but as I said earlier, presence reveals possibilities. We said, what else is possible? Maybe your view of value and the client's view of value are very different. Bottom line of the story is, Peter approached the client, talked about it in a different way. And by the way, Peter had read the books on value pricing. He understood the principles, but inside himself it didn't feel right because his view was it's not right to charge a client a lot of money. That was his view. But with allowing himself to be present, he also saw another possibility, and that was, it's really up to the client to determine value, isn't it? Now, we all know that. We've all heard it, but unless we can feel it inside, we don't do it. Peter spoke with the client, and that engagement became contingent upon results, and he ended up with over $100,000. He was quite happy about it. Sole practitioner, that was a very significant amount of money. Donna, hard to get people. That was her view hard to, to attract people. If you have any doubt that it's hard to attract people, that's the view actually, isn't it? But just read the, read the statistics, read what's going on in the industry. There is a shortage of people, no doubt about it. Is it hard to attract people? Well, that's one view, but presence reveals possibilities, which means recognizing that what you view as truth, what you view as a limitation, is just a view. And then we ask ourselves, what else is possible? And the answer is maybe I can create a culture that attracts people and keeps great people and makes people want to work here because we're doing things very differently. So all of the answers are out there. When you decide you want to bring more value to clients, we know how to do that. When you decide you want to step into a different kind of billing model, we know how to do that. There's lots of information out there about building a culture. To do that, we have to be open to that possibility. That's where we get stuck. That's why so many in this profession are still struggling. Not because there's a lack of answers out there. My gosh, there's tons of awesome solutions. But because the stuckness is here in the way of thinking and people thinking that their views are the reality and they're nothing more than a view. So ask yourself, what are the views that I'm holding that are keeping me stuck? And I guarantee, anywhere that you're stuck, there are views contributing to that. Absolutely guarantee that. And what's the solution? Stop. Just allow yourself to become present, present in the moment. Because presence reveals possibilities. See what else is possible. That's one view. What else is possible? It's really that simple. Leadership 
building an awesome firm, accomplishing all the things that you want to do. It's not about what you do. It's not about how you do it, even though the books and seminars are filled with that. It's about where you come from. It's about where you operate from. It's really that simple. It's about beingness. It's about coming from beingness and seeing what makes sense in the moment, because in this moment, is our wisdom, is our clarity, is our knowing what to do. But we don't see it if we're caught up in the self-limiting views of past and future. In fact, we don't need views. We think we do. They're efficient in some ways. They help automate behavior. But we can actually operate without them. Because when we're present, wisdom reveals itself. Each one of us has access to wisdom. Wisdom's not personal. It's universal but we're so busy caught up in our heads, thinking we've got it all figured out because that's what our views tell us. We're so busy caught up in that, we don't stop and recognize what else is possible. And presence reveals possibilities. And presence is nothing more than stopping and bringing your full attention, your conscious awareness into this moment and allowing whatever's there to be there. It doesn't matter if you like it, don't like it, just acknowledge what's there. You don't have to wrestle with it. You don't have to struggle with it. You don't have to resist it. Just acknowledge it and say, OK, that's there. And what else is possible? We can take control back of our lives, our practices in our lives. We don't have to be on autopilot all the time. Our views put us on autopilot. But we don't need to be on autopilot. Convenient sometimes, but we become a prisoner of it without realizing we've done that. Everything we need to know to have, to do, becomes immediately available to us as we allow ourselves to be present. And the only way to know this, the only way to experience this, is to do it. So stop. Just be still and notice what's here. Welcome it, allow it, come into the moment, ask yourself what else is possible. And all I ask of you is, very one, is one really, really simple thing. And that is, never ever believe in anything that limits you. Thank you. <laughs>